In this video, I am going to trim the simple wool that I threw in a previous demonstration video. I let this dry to leather hard and it's not sticky anymore. I'm going to use the water seal method. So I am going to take my sponge and clean the wheel head. And then I'm going to use a little bit of water and wipe it on the rim so the rim is glistening. Just carefully flip your bowl over, set it upside down on the wheel, and start to push down with some pressure and kind of shimmy it a little bit, and it's going to create a suction. From there, I'm going to see where the pot hit and misses my finger. When it hits my finger, I'm going to stop the wheel and push the pot just a little bit in the other direction. I'm going to keep doing this so you can see where it hits and then push it back just a bit until it runs against my finger as consistently as I can get it. Once it's centered, I kind of tap down, make sure it's stuck to the wheel really well, and then I have a variety of trimming tools that I like to use, and I'll kind of play around with them all in this video. So you've got your traditional loop tool, a couple of ribbon tools, different sizes, And so I do rest my elbows on my legs just to kind of anchor me. If my pots are small enough, I'll rest my wrists on the splash pans too. And so I'm starting by just removing clay off the top and down the sides of the form. I move slow and steady while my wheel spins about medium speed. And so this will help me take weight out of the walls. It also will even things out if something's a little bit wonky or there's an indentation. And I like to use the loop because it's larger and it covers more ground, so it makes trimming go faster. I can do the same thing with this black trim tool. This is just a specialty trim tool. They have all different kinds, but I can use the edge of this and trim down the wall of the pot. I will use my ribbon tools when I go to set my ring. So typically on a bowl, you will have a traditional foot, which is a ring. And I like to tap on the walls in the side. And the louder and more hollow that noise is, the closer I am to breaking through the pot. So it kind of lets me know how thin my walls are. So I'm gonna work back and forth, kind of trimming down onto the wall and then up into the vertical part of the ring. I'm trying to get out any flat spots that I could potentially put in while I'm setting the foot because I don't want a flat spot on my nice round bowl. And so I'm setting a ring that's about half an inch in height because I like to have a well-established foot on my piece. And then I'm gonna see kind of how wide I want my ring. So I set a little line there. Then I'm gonna start to carve out the middle of the form. So I move from the center to the edges. And what's important is when I'm trimming out the middle, I want that inner part to curve a little bit or to be a little bit dome-like so it follows the round shape of the bowl. I don't want that just to be flat straight across until I hit the ring. I'm going to kind of curve down into the start of the ring. 
a little bit difficult to see it on this angle. So kind of like a dome shape or like an arch. And I can clean up the inner portion of the ring, get that nice and smooth. We don't want any sharp edges anywhere on the foot because it could potentially scratch a counter surface or a table surface. You always kind of want to round and smooth those things out a little bit. Then I just kind of touch it up with my damp sponge, just a titch little bit. And then I'll um, make sure you can see this from the side too. Once I carve my name into the bottom. There we go, kind of fix up the rim a little bit from sitting on the wheel. There's my foot, well established, that is it.